process. No one does this. So people wake up one morning and say, look, I'm going to put the business on the market and just go and put it on the market. So no one does. Well, most of the people don't do any preparation. Like funny as, the, as it is, just the fact that you're sitting in this room, you're probably in like less than 2% of the population and thinking, well, I'm thinking of putting a business on the market. Maybe I should see what's it all about before I actually put it on the market. Normally people come to us, something happened either in their life or in their business that actually um, uh, made them need to sell and they get on the phone and said, listen, can you help? We need to sell and we need to sell yesterday. That's normally how it works. And these are the three components that you need to prepare. You need to prepare business, you need to prepare yourself, and you need to prepare the sales process. Now, some people do something on uh, uh, preparing um, sales process. Um, few businesses are prepared to some extent. No one prepares themselves for the process. No one. Um, so how do you prepare the business? We came up with this root acronym, just so it's easier to remember. And so you got to remember four letters. RUD stands for risk, uncertainty, doubts, and economic appeal. But it starts with the risk. So you got to ask yourself, OK, so, so the best way to think about this is think about if you are buying competitor's business, and not just any competitor, but that closest competitor that you always come against, the guy that you really don't like that much and the guys that you really enjoy stealing a business from. If you're buying their business, what would you see as a risk? Because the buyers will see the same point in your business or as a risk. So ask yourself, what, what would be the, 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 the risk components in this business and how I would address them? Risk is the measure of a possible possibility of the loss in the business. So if you've got a 30% of your clients or of your income coming from one client, you lose this client, you lost the 30% of the business. So what you got to do with the risk, you got to minimize it. Now, it's not possible to eliminate the risk totally because it's a business. That's why it goes for 30% or three times profit. That's why we're selling it. But you can minimize it. Uh, uncertainty is something we simply don't know if it's going to happen. And I actually had something probably last week, I think it was Wednesday, that they came to us and said, look, uh, we got this new contract that we got it, and it's not ready yet, but we got a verbal go-ahead. Uh, how many times in your business you had a verbal go-ahead <laughs> and you actually didn't get a contract on the end? And that's uncertainty. Another big uncertainty in the business is, is lease. I've got one year lease. So what's going to happen after that one year? Are you going to be able to renew the lease? Just the fact that the lease was renewed three times before, it doesn't mean that it's going to be renewed four times. So that creates a certainty. Uncertainty, you need to minimize it, but most, even better, try to eliminate it. Try to eliminate any uncertainties. Doubts, doubts are statements and facts that can't be proven. Look, I've got this contract. It's definitely coming my way, but I've got no way of proving big part of this is in cash business is the portion that we don't bank. So there's a part of the money that hasn't been banked and they said, look, you know, but there's more money on top of it. It just wasn't recorded properly. Uh, it's impossible to sell. So again, doubts need to be either reduced or eliminated. And economic appeal. How many people can buy your business? All right. If I'm buying a business and I need to be a plumber, and the business is going for a million dollars, I need to be a plumber that has a million, our access to a million dollars. And your market from everybody goes down to very, very niche and small number of the people. But if you still got a plumbing business that kind of has a manager and he's got a project manager, he's got a few management levels, and I give you 100% vendor finance, all of a sudden, everybody is my market. I'm not saying, by the way, to go and give 100% vendor finance to everybody but just to illustrate how you can in, 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 increase economic appeal. In some of the businesses, you don't need to do that because the market is good, but some of the businesses, you really have to work very hard on this last one to find out the way to actually sell that business to people. So how do you work with this route? Well, very simple. You identify and then reduce, eliminate, and increase. Now, preparing yourself. This is something that no one does, all right? People go on the market and the... Uh, Selling business becomes a do or die decision. I'm either going to sell a business or I'm going to perish. 
And it happens so many times that your negotiating, negotiating position is really, really bad that you can't negotiate because you don't have a option B. Couple of things that you can do. One, and, and one ni nice way to do this is to do this, and we're gonna talk about establishing asking price, is um, start with the asking price and decide what your exit point is. And then test that exit point. So asking price may gonna be a million dollars, but my exit point is gonna be $800,000, out of which $600,000 is today, and $200,000 um, 12 months down the track. If I don't achieve price in between, I need to know what my alternative to selling a business is, all right? Alternative to selling business could be management buyout, could be, if your alternative is drop down the price lower, well, you didn't uh, decide on exit point very well, all right? Now, what we need to do is to have a really, really good alternative to selling a business, otherwise, selling a business is really gonna become a nightmare. I'm gonna try to illustrate this. Uh, I'll try something and I hope it works, all right? Now imagine you're there, this is, let's call it Trzlecki truck, all right? And you come to this sign and it's a, it's a, it's a December, and it's about 45 degrees Celsius outside, and you driving your family on, on this holiday of the lifetime and you're in the car, and everything is going really fine, all right? And you come to this sign and say, fuel 441 kilometers. And you, you look at your fuel gauge, yeah, oh, we'll be all right, okay? So you keep on driving. And then somewhere halfway through, you see this. And you're about to run out of petrol. I was on Strzlecki truck and we had a problem with the car and it was a pretty difficult situation. I didn't run out of petrol. But imagine if this happens. Now, your people die in these situations. You've got the two kids and, and your partner in the car and you start sweating and you're really not comfortable and your partner's looking at you and says, is everything all right? Said, no, no, it's all cool, it's all cool. And then, no, seriously, something, something is wrong. He said, listen, we've got a problem. We've got 200 kilometers to go. I've got no petrol. I don't think we're gonna make it. What are the options? Option A, leave the family in the car on the sun without the aircon and you walk on the sun without the aircon. Option B, wait until night comes in and then leave them there. Option C, wait for somebody to maybe turn up and help you out. It's pretty difficult, isn't it, all right? So you're not really, really good. So your partner says, ah, oh, look, don't stress about it. You remember, remember that jerry can or 40 liters that you bought to, I don't know, wash some tools at home or, or, or do something with it and it's been sitting for, there for 12 months? We were packing a trailer, I put that at the back. So yeah, we got another 40 liters. If that happens to you, your situation, if, if, I, if I manage to take you to this journey properly, your situation would change instantly. You wouldn't be stressed. You wouldn't be scared about it, uh, for, for, for anyone's life or family or anything like that. The situation would be totally uh, different. It's exactly the same if you got the alternative to selling the business. Do yourself a favor before you put the business on the market, ask yourself, what is my plan B? And make that plan, plan B real. Your exit point is just about the plan B. If you get an offer between exit point and your asking price, be prepared to accept it.